Hi there, Meg's here. How's everyone doing? I just wanted to really quick shoot this video. It's probably going to be a little shaky, sorry. Um, and you'll hear my kids, no big deal. I'm, I'm just wanted to come on and show you guys how I avocado dye really quick. So basically, um, you get some old pans, like these are really old um, baking dishes. I strictly use them for this only. Um, this is a broiler pan. I love the markings it leaves when I put it in the oven. This is like an old turkey pan, as you can tell. It's just, it's clean. I, I mean, it's been washed, but it's just nasty looking because I use it for coffee dyeing. And the same for this little muffin pan. I use it because I like the circles that it leaves on the papers. So anyways, really quick, I take a big pot. I have a big soup um, kettle, which actually is being cleaned right now. And I just cut the avocados. After I use the avocados, I clean off the skins really good. And I put the skins and the pits, about three or four avocados worth, into a pot. And I fill it almost halfway because it's going to boil a lot, which means you're going to, you know, the condensation and all that, you're going to lose a lot of water. So try to use as many avocados as you can. Um, but I will say this, once I used like five avocado skins and I got more of a brown color, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it seems like three or four is a really good number for me. Anyways, um, so I boil it for about an hour and a half. Now, the last time batch that I did, I actually split it up into two boiling sessions just because I ended up having to turn the, the stove off because I had to do something um, away from here. And then I came back and turned it back on and boiled it. So it was like 40 minutes, and then I did it for another half hour when I came back home. And I got a really good color. I don't know how good it's picking up, but this is the water. It's like an orangey red on camera, but it's actually like a really good red in person. Um... So basically, if you just dip your papers one at a time, I take the paper and I just slide it in like at an angle. So first I lay it, pat it a little bit, and then I slide the paper down into it. And then I just slowly sink it down with my fingers till it gets all the way into the pan. Now I put about four, five, and then oh, just regular eight and a half by 11 sheets of copy paper and then I put in a couple guest checks and then a couple of these maybe one of these papers uh, oh gosh that light um, just some you know what is this called ledger paper or something I don't know um, and then maybe an envelope or something so I noticed when I dip them in and then I take them out and put it on the pan there's barely any color so what I did is I put those four or five sheets in that I talked about and I just put the lid on I went and gave my baby a bath so it's been about, and then we played a little bit on the floor. It's been about 40 minutes that they've been soaking. And I got a beautiful pink color. Now, it's, of course, it never shows up good on camera, especially since I don't have the lights on that I usually film with. Um, you know, so you're not going to get the full effect with my lighting right now, unfortunately. But I can assure you in person, this looks a lot more pink than what it is. It's a really beautiful pink, actually. <laughs> I just wish that the camera was doing it justice. It looks very, I'm looking at through the screen of the camera right now and it's looking almost like a white, um, with a little peachy, but in person it's like super pale pink. It doesn't look like it has white on it at all. It's beautiful. So I'm loving the color that it's giving. And let me just see if I can lift one up. I don't want to rip my paper because it does take two hands, but if you can see this color, look at that it's really beautiful just a beautiful pink color and I'm so glad I let it soak I think that's the trick but with that being said it is gonna take a long time to dye papers that way you know imagine letting four or five soak so I think you know for a half hour 40 minutes it's gonna take you a long time to do that um, so I guess you could get these tubs these are usually you know I like to get these tubs right here that I have out One's for coffee, one's for avocado. I have two of them here with lids. And I like to spray up my, uh, fill up my spray bottle with some instant coffee. Um, and then, oops, like one with instant coffee and then one with avocado water. But actually, I don't have a lot of avocado water. So I'm probably just going to do the dip and um, 
what was I saying, the dip and bake method for the avocado. And then for the coffee, I'm going to fill this up. And then I just open up my plastic, you know, Tupperware. As you can tell, it's all stained inside. And what I do is, I should have, I wasn't planning on making this video. I just grabbed the camera. So I don't have anything ready. But, um, you know, we can just play along. I can show you. <laughs> I lay, I first, I squirt the coffee or pour some down. So there's coffee down here. Then I lay the paper down. This is just how I do it. There's plenty of other methods that you, or plenty of videos I'm sure you can watch. And if you want, you know, they have, you can get these plastic or vinyl rather. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, they're, they're doilies, plastic doilies. But then I have these. These are vinyl placemats that I just cut up because they were huge. Um, I got these up north on vacation at like a vintage shop for a quarter. But they leave really good marks and they dry really good. Or you can use stencils. So you can also use like just plastic stencils. So that works well too. So basically I would take my um, plastic doily, lay it on top, make sure it's, you know, on there really good. And then I just squirt, 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 squirt all the way around and saturate it. And then I quickly, this is just what I do, quickly get another sheet of paper and lay it on top and I press it down and like, you know, squirt again, squirt, 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 and I smooth it out, you know, because it'll be wet so it'll be pliable and I smooth it out and then I just continue. If I want to put another doily on, I usually skip because I had already squirted this, right? So therefore, it's not going to have any marks. You know, so I would go ahead and put another sheet of paper down, and then I will put this on top, squirt, 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 and so on and so forth. Then, a lot of people put the lid back on and let it, or set it somewhere with the lid open and let it dry. I usually take this huge thing when I fill it up and I'm happy with what I have. I set it on my dining room table. I have a huge, you know, fan overhead, and I... And just let the water, or the water, I let the fan blow on it um, at high speed. And it usually dries the top layer, but the, the bottom layers stay soaking wet forever. And I don't have patience for it. So whenever I'm done and I have time, I can let them dry or, or sit in here for like a day, maybe a day and a half. Then I'll come out and I'll just start peeling the papers off and I'll just take them to the oven. And when I do the oven, I... You know, like this right here, I'll set this on, and I'll set another sheet of paper right here. Um, I've seen people stack a few papers at a time. I never really do that, just because I get weirded out <laughs> about putting stacks in the oven. I don't know why, but also, I have taken a sheet and then put something on top of it, and then it leaves the, the edge of the other paper on it, and I just don't like how it works out. I need to practice more with adding more to the oven, I guess, but... Um, anyways, I just put a couple sheets on a pan, and I put two pans in it at a time. Um, so I can usually get like four sheets of paper at a time, which isn't a lot. It takes forever, but I do it at 260 for around five minutes. That's the time that works for me. Everybody's different. Um, some people will tell you 100 degrees and be very careful. Some people tell you 300 degrees for four minutes. You really just have to mess around with it, but whatever you do, be careful. You know, use your instincts and your common sense and all that good stuff never leave the oven you know <laughs> but um just keep an eye on it it usually for me five minutes is perfect it comes out perfect and then your paper doesn't stick or anything it comes right off and after that I take it right to the iron and I just set my iron on um, like a medium temperature it used to be like the lowest temperature but I like it a little bit higher no steam of course and then I just iron right on top of the paper. Uh, the higher that you go, if you go too hot with the iron and you do it on the paper, it can curl your paper. Your paper will just go and curl up and you don't want that. So basically you want to do it on a medium heat. Do, you know, iron, 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 and then flip is what I do. I flip it over, iron, 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 and keep flipping it so it's a nice smooth paper. So I hope that um, makes sense and I hope that helps um, anybody wondering how I avocado dye and the person that asked in the email thank you for asking um, you know who you are and um, I hope this was a little better visual for you um, so yeah 
Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.